Not much of an intro is needed here. We're ranking the best player from every NBA team, and we're not including rookies because they haven't officially played a game in the league yet, so let's get into it. Number 30, the Sacramento Kings with Zach Randolph. I mean, come on, Sacramento. Let's all give a moment of silence for Kings fans everywhere. 29, the Orlando Magic with Nikola Vucevic. All right, the Magic aren't doing too much better. The best player was between Aaron Gordon or Vucevic. It really could have gone either way, but we're giving it to Vucevic. 28, the Atlanta Hawks with Jeremy Lin. All right, I, I swear the list is gonna get better soon. The Hawks are in an all out rebuild right now. And when Jeremy Lin's your best official player that's not a rookie, you better hope that's the case. So let's all hope that Trey Young turns out to be as good as they think he will. 27, the Brooklyn Nets with D'Angelo Russell. Let's not all forget that D'Angelo was a number two overall pick. The man has had and still has a lot of people that think he's gonna turn out to be great. But so far into his career, he hasn't shown too much improvement since his rookie season. Number 26, the Chicago Bulls with Laurie Markin. There's a lot of young talent on the Bulls and we would have given this one to Markinen and Zach Levine, but since Levine was injured for most of the season and Laurie came out and played as good as he did as a rookie, it goes to him. Number 25, the Dallas Mavericks with Harrison Barnes. Most of us remember those days when we saw Harrison Barnes start to look like a breakout star on the Warriors. And then here we are today. The man's been averaging almost 20 a game since he joined the Mavs, but hasn't reached the level that he looked like he was on the path for, at least yet. 24, the Miami Heat with Goran Dragic, the man that made the All-Star team last year after John Wall and Kevin Love went out with injuries. Some people say the man's underrated, but I'm not too sure about that. And should he really have been an All-Star over Ben Simmons? Either way, he's definitely the Heat's best player right now. 23, the Clippers with Lou Williams. The reigning sixth man of the year is easily the Clippers best player right now and deserves to be ranked here. You'd like to think the man would be even better as a starter, but Lou and some players just play better coming off the bench. And he definitely made a case to where he could have been an all-star last year. 22, the Detroit Pistons with Blake Griffin. Man, Blake's been on a decline. He used to be an all-star every year, but for the past three seasons, he can't stop getting injured. He's definitely the Pistons' best player right now, but even though he's been a five-time all-star, he ranks us low because of how he plays at this point in time. 21, the Grizzlies with Marc Gasol. Somebody needs to trade Marc Gasol. He's been one of the better all-around centers in the league on both offense and defense, which is why I'd put him as the better Grizzly over Mike Conley. 20. The Denver Nuggets with Nikola Jokic. It was a no-brainer to put Jokic over Blake Griffin and Marc Gasol because the man put up 18, 10, and 6 on 50% shooting and 40% from 3 last year. He got a max contract and definitely earned it because it looks like he's going to be one of the top centers of the league for a lot of years to come. And I had no problem putting Jokic over Isaiah Thomas as the best nugget because as of right now, it's not even a question. 19. The Phoenix Suns with Devin Booker. The fact that the youngest player on this list ranks in at number 19 is a great thing for Booker. Because at only 21 years old, he averaged 25 a game. But as the Suns do get better and add more talented guys, and he's not the only one carrying that team, we're going to get to see just how good Devin Booker really is pretty soon. Number 18, the Charlotte Hornets with Kemba Walker. I feel like a lot of people will want Kimba higher on this list, but then again, the man can't get wins. He's a great all-around point guard that's been an all-star for the past two seasons, and he's the best player the Hornets have had in like 20 years, which isn't saying much. But if the man does put together more wins, I'd rank him higher. 17, the New York Knicks with Chris Stops Porzingis. Not gonna lie, I forgot that Nowitzki Jr. was selected for an all-star team last year, but he definitely deserved it. Because before he went out with an injury, the man was having his best season yet and had been putting up a few monster 40-point games. And there's definitely no competition on the Knicks for Chris Stops as their best player. 16, the Utah Jazz with Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell wasn't an all-star, but he definitely played like one as a rookie. He's by far Utah's best player, and he's probably going to be for a long time. He came straight into the league and played with composure at such a high level, and by putting up 23-3, he took the Jazz from what looked like an average team to beating the Thunder in the first round of the playoffs. 15, the Indiana Pacers with Victor Oladipo. 
Oladipo went from being a solid role player to a star player this season. And the man's only gonna get better. He came out as a better player in every aspect of his game, but most importantly, he came out as a better leader than last season. And he'd probably be ranked higher after this season. Number 14, the Wizards with John Wall. Wall's a five-time All-Star who's averaged 20 and 10 the past four seasons and has made it clear he's a top 10 point guard in the league. And himself and Bradley Beal have also made it clear that they've been without a doubt one of the best backcourts in the league. Beal's been cutting down that gap between how good him and John Wall are, but Wall is still the best Wizards player by far. He's right in the middle of his prime and I really feel like this is gonna be the best season of his career. 13. The Cavaliers with Kevin Love We've seen two versions of Kevin Love. The one where he quietly put up some of the best numbers in the league for the Timberwolves, and the version where he still played like an all-star, but a very watered down version of himself. So now that LeBron's gone, soon we're gonna get to see who the real Kevin Love is. Whichever version we get of him though, I feel like this is the spot he deserves to be on this list. 12, the Timberwolves with Jimmy Butler. Whatever team Jimmy ends up on is still up in the air, but for now we're putting him down on the Timberwolves as their best player. We all knew that Butler was a great player on offense and defense, and even though he's leaving the Wolves already, it was crazy to see how much of an impact he made on that team. He instantly took the Timberwolves from being known as a young team to a playoff team. So that combined with his overall game is what puts him this high on the list. Number 11, the Spurs with DeMar DeRozan. This is one of the closer battles for best on the team between DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge. Aldridge for years was thought of as the clear best power forward in the league, but nowadays we don't hear too much from him. They were both all-stars last year, but overall we've seen DeRozan make a bigger impact on his team, so we gave this spot to him. He's going to have one of his best years on the Spurs, but the top 10 is locked down full of the league's top stars, so he ends up right outside of it. Number 10, the 76ers with Joel Embiid. At this point in time, it's safe to put Embiid over Simmons as Philly's best player. The man is gonna come out strong this season and put up some big numbers. And he definitely deserves to be in the top 10 here. Maybe not this season, but soon Embiid's gonna be a top 5 player in the league. The fast paced NBA of today isn't built for centers, but Joel Embiid's proving that it's still possible for a big man to dominate in the league. Number 9, The Thunder with Russell Westbrook. I think you have to put Russ as the Thunder's best player over Paul George. He's probably the fastest, strongest, and most athletic point guard in the NBA. And he knows how to use all of those things to his advantage. And he's the first former league MVP to come up on this list. He could not pad his stats and shoot a little less, but he's still averaged a triple-double the past two seasons, and has continued to come up in MVP talks. So he comes in at number 9. Number 8. The Portland Trailblazers with Damian Lillard. Dame is without a doubt the Blazers' best player, and some of you might not agree with him being higher than Westbrook, but the man deserves it. He made the All-NBA first team, and he doesn't get enough credit for how good he is. The Blazers wouldn't really be anywhere near the playoffs if it wasn't for Lillard. He averaged 27-6-4 for the past two seasons, and even though he doesn't have better stats than Westbrook, I'd still put him as a better player and point guard any day. Number 7, the Boston Celtics with Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving to me is easily the second best point guard in the league, and we've seen that not only is he a great regular season player, but he can come up huge in the playoffs, and I'd put him as probably the most clutch player in the league today. Kyrie's a great shooter, and can handle the ball and finish around the rim as good as anyone else in the league. Number 6, the Bucks with Giannis and Tentacumpo. Now we're getting into the players that are just as good on offense as they are on defense. Giannis put up 27 points and 10 rebounds a game last year. And even though he can't consistently shoot the ball still, he makes up for it by being able to space jam dunk the ball anytime he's within 6 feet of the basket. Number 5, the Raptors with Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> Kawhi might be the best two-way player in the league. A lot of people are excited to see just how good he is on the Raptors this season. He's a former Finals MVP, a steals leader, a two-time Defensive Player of the Year, and has the ability to put up at least 25 a game for the season. Number 4, the Rockets with James Harden. Alright, I said we were getting to the best two-way players in the league. I meant for everyone besides James Harden. But what the man lacks on defense, he definitely makes up for on offense. It's like what he lacks for in confidence of his chin, he makes up for with his beard. 
But seriously, right now he's right up there with Durant on who's the best scorer in the league, and he's the reigning MVP. Number 3, the Pelicans with Anthony Davis. Some people might disagree, but I think it's an easy choice to put Anthony Davis as number 3 ahead of guys like James Harden. He's been averaging 28 points and 11 rebounds a game on offense, and almost 3 blocks and 2 steals a game on defense. This, combined with the fact that Davis has been developing a 3 point shot, makes him one of the most complete players in the league. Number 2, the Warriors with Kevin Durant. KD does beat out Steph Curry for the worst spot on this list because he's the better all around player. Durant thinks he deserves the Defensive Player of the Year award, and while I don't know if I'd go that far, I do think the man's an underrated defender. He might be skinny, but he's great at protecting the paint and locking down guards when he needs to. And I don't even need to get into how dominant he is on offense. Number 1, The Lakers with LeBron James. Let's face it, I'm not a huge LeBron fan, but it's common knowledge that LeBron's been the best player in the league for years now. And that wraps up this video. Not everyone's going to agree on everything, so definitely comment anything you might have agreed or disagreed on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.